Eager to end this conversation, I head back down to class. I'm greeted by the twin specters of Shizune and Misha, looking like they mean business. Well, Shizune looks like she means business anyway. Misha just looks like she's about to start laughing at any minute. Up on the roof again, he chan You know that's dangerous, don't you? Hmm. That's right. The school cannot be held responsible for any entry that comes up being there, you know. Furthermore, we could report you for breaking the rules. Misha leans in and whispers conspiratorially. But we won't, he chan <laughs> You three are so are too cute together. She strains up again, laughing at my sudden blush. Wahaha. <laughs> You're too easy to tease, he chan Hey, come on. I'm still new here, sort of. Isn't it me to pick on the newcomer like this? Nope. It's to help you get acclimated to your new surroundings. Ah, uh, I see. Well, do you have to be so overzealous about it? Yep. This is still the pirate scene? Yep. <laughs> ah, that aside, Heechan, we were looking for you this morning, but you weren't in your room. Of course I wasn't. I was out for my morning exercise, or here in class, bright and early. Unlike you. Shizune looks peeved in a bit later, so does Misha, or she tries to, at any rate. That was because of student council business. You should be grateful that we worked so hard for you. Oh, I... Oh, I am. I am. So what did you need me for? Not another attempt to rope me in to do their dirty work, I hope. We had to give you something, but since you weren't around, we dropped it off in your room. Something? Like what? Oh, you'll find out when you get back, Hee-chan. Wahaha. <laughs> Mato entering the room ends her conversation, and we all head to our seats. It's only after I've settled down my desk and the teacher started talking about something or other that something odd strikes me. What did Rin mean? You too seem to. Was Emmy staring at something too? For a brief moment, I considered the possibility that Emmy was staring at me the way I was staring at her. Of course, that's ridiculous. Still, I can't deny that I wouldn't mind if it were true. But it's best not to think of that. No need to get my hopes up. Come to think of it, when did I start having hopes like that anyway? I shake my head and attempt to clear it and focus on the lesson. After class, I make my way to my room. Mateo really piled on the homework today. Before I can open my door, however, I am suddenly intercepted by Kenji, who has just exploded out of his own room in a flurry of papers. Hey, we need to talk. These rooftop shenanigans of yours, man. They've got to stop. What? You're running around the rooftop with the limbless wonders. They're women, man. You'll get yourself killed running around like that. I don't follow. Kenji sighs and just his glasses before what could be understood in his attempt at explaining himself patiently. Look, we're friends, so I'm telling you this for your own good. But if I were going to kill someone, I'd do it by throwing them off the roof and making it look like an accident. And if I've thought of it, you can be sure they've thought of it, too. They're crafty, almost as crafty as I am. I see. Out of the loop. That fits, Kenji. I see. Good. I'm glad we had this chat. Lend me 500 yen. Why? I'm sorry. I need to get a drink, man. I've been inside all day and the tap water's been compromised, as I'm sure you know. So I need to stock up on something canned. Got it. But to do that, I need 500 yen. And since I've just saved your life with my timely advice, you can at least spare me 500 yen. You know, if it'll make him go away, 500 yen is a bargain. I hand the money over to Kenji, who nods and thanks and dashes off down the hallway, but not before he walks his door. With an what an exhausting person, I'd better go in case he changes his mind. Hmm? As I close the door, my heel taps against something lying on the floor. It's a brightly colored rectangle of paper. Oh, this must be the something Misha mentioned before. Probably a student council leaflet she slid into the door. However, when I pick it up, I found that I couldn't have been more wrong. Someone actually wrote me an old-fashioned handwritten paper letter. Who bothers doing something like that in this day and age, anyway? Yet, as, unli yet, as unlikely as a prospect of receiving one sounds, this is definitely a letter I have in my hands. I was planning on finishing my homework, getting some dinner, and going to bed in order to be ready for tomorrow morning's run. However, the letter has naturally caught my interest. I sit at my desk to examine it properly. It's the first piece of mail I've received here at Yamaku, so I'd feel special even if it wasn't something as rare as a handwritten letter. Still piracy. 
What causes me even more trepidation is the name on, of the sender written neatly on the back of the envelope. It will not go. I have no idea why she would write to me. I haven't been in contact with anyone from my old school since I transferred. And Iwanaka is the last person I'd expect to want to write me a letter. Yeah, why would Iwanaka message us? The last time I saw Iwanaka was terribly awkward. Embarrassingly, embarrassingly so. She came to my hospital room, peeled me an apple out of courtesy, and then we practically sat in silence for half an hour. She said goodbye and didn't look me in the eye when she closed the door. Uh, it might have been a natural end to the series of visits that was probably pretty painful to both. It might have been a natural end to the series of visits that were probably pretty painful for both of us. Every time she visited me in the hospital, I wanted to talk to her, but something stopped me every time. Every time I didn't speak made the next time even harder. She looked so guilty that I didn't want to say anything that might upset her. I never could figure out the right words to say. I think Iwanako blamed herself for my heart attack. That's ridiculous, of course, but knowing it and believing it are two very different things. I told her that it wasn't her fault. She nodded and I really think she understood that if it hadn't been that, then sooner or later something else would have made my heart give out. Yet she looked so hopelessly sad every time she opened the door and entered my room. So I never managed to say the things I wanted to say. In the end, that might have hurt her even more. Carefully, I opened the envelope and draw out the fold of letter from within. Dear Hussal, how are you? I hope you are well and happy at your new school. Everyone here misses you. Almost all of, the, almost all of our second year class got put together in class 3-1 for the final year. So we were pretty comfortable right from the beginning of the year. I'm sure you would have been assigned to this class as well. The mood among the third year seems to be very anxious about the final exams, even though they are so far away. The teachers are badgering us about it all the time. Even old Mr. Tachibana, who is, by the way, our homeroom teacher this year. Would you believe it? I was sure that he'd retire after our second year, but here he is, nagging everyone about us studying for exams. I think things like that are the main reason why the mood among the third years is so nervous. I must admit that I'm somehow losing confidence in myself as well, even though I'm all, even though I've already, even though I must admit that I'm somehow losing confidence in myself as well, even though I have always fared reasonably well in exams. It's so weird to think we are already seniors, isn't it? Time has really flown past. I wonder where it went. The new first year seems so young and somehow really innocent. I keep wondering if I was like them in my first year. I've been feeling nostalgic like this for the whole first trimester. There are other things I want to say. I'm writing to you because I felt that there are things I should have said after the incident back in winter. I really regret that I wasn't able to say them in person, and I have no excuse for it. Yeah, I think I have had quite enough of this. I crumple up the sheet of paper and toss it across the room. My aim is off, so the letter rolls under my nightstand instead of going into my wastebasket. That was an apology for abandoning me, except I don't know that I really need it more at this point. The hospital seems like a lifetime ago, and here, now, I've got other things on my mind. Emmy, for starters. It wasn't great to be abandoned during my stay, but it's not something I'm worried about anymore. In fact, I hadn't even thought about the hospital what feels like forever until this letter came in. It's almost annoying to have received it. I've got exams to study for myself. I have no time for the past. Now, about that homework... So, what's the plan for today anyway? Current scene, famous last words. I'm waiting patiently in the hallway of the girls' dorms where he goes outside of Emmy and Rin's rooms. And he's apparently helping Rin with getting dressed. I suppose it makes perfect sense that I have no idea how Rin would get dressed otherwise. Picnic! Picnic! That's what I said! Sounds pretty exciting! I know, right? Rin chooses this moment to make an observation. The sky seems threatening today. Actually, I noticed that too, on my way over. Despite the sunshine of the early morning, the afternoon seems to have taken a turn for the gloomy. There's a heaviness to the air as well that usually heralds a rainstorm. I wonder if I should have brought my umbrella. She's got a point. I mean, are you sure that you still want to get risk getting caught in the rain? I don't even know why I bothered asking. I think I worded that wrong. Uh, sorry, what to say? Emmy, you sure that you still want to risk getting caught in the rain? I don't even know why I bothered asking. Emmy popped out of Rin's room into the hallway looking shocked that I even suggest canceling our plans. Of course! What, the threat of rain is supposed to stop me? 
I can't help but grin at her belligerent response. It's almost like she's daring the rain to come. If Mother Nature were walking down the street, I think Annie would probably start a fight with her. Or at least challenge her to a race. In fact, Annie seems almost aggressively cheerful today. Rin wanders out into the hallway, looking at her usual self. Well then, are we all ready to go? I'm ready. Rin nods and says a single word. Basket. Beg pardon? Basket in Annie's room. You should carry it. And it claps a hand to her mouth, embarrassed. Oh my gosh, I forgot. I almost forgot all about it. Nice save, Rin. Annie darts into her room and emerges with what looks like a very well stocked picnic basket. As she hands it over to me, I know that it feels heavy enough to be one, two. Good lord, how much food did she pack? More to the point, where did she get the money for all of this? So, are we the head out? Are we, so, are we set to head out? Yep. Wayne gives another nod and we head out of the dormitory. I can't help but frown when I notice how great this guy's gotten in the 10 minutes I was inside. Still, Emmy does not seem concerned by such petty concerns as the color of the sky. She's positively skipping as we walk. Which reminds me, where are we going? This brings Emmy up short and she shoots me an embarrassed look. You know, I hadn't really thought of that. What do you think, Sal? Where's the spot that- Well, there's a spot where we ate during the festival, but it might be nice to leave the campus for a while. However, I'm not sure there's any good places to do that in town. Just as I'm about to open my mouth, Rin unexpectedly interjects with a suggestion. There's a park in town near the art shop. Great idea, Rin. I totally forgot all about that place. Crisis averted. Do you know how to get there, Rin? Rin shrugs. It's pretty likely. Good enough for me. I would prefer knowing for sure, but what the hell. Lead on, Rin. The three of us quickly make our way off camp to take the road down into the town. The basket's a bit heavy. I hope that the park is close by. We pass the art supply store, Rin show, slowing her pace slightly as we go by. And he notices Rin's change of pace and stops. You want to go in, Rin? Rin shrugs. Nothing I need. Are you sure? There's a slight hold over a smile on Rin's face, quickly replaced with her usual expression. Life's uncertain, but on this at least I am pretty sure. Nice of you to offer. Well, it's not like I'm the one carrying the basket, but I'll bet Hassal wouldn't have minded anyway, right? Oh, of course not. This is hardly a heavy load. I flex for emphasis. And, and he stifles a snort of laughter by pointing to the park at which we've suddenly arrived. Oh, I remember this place. I ran into you here that one time, didn't I, Rin? Rin's eyebrow raises slightly. Maybe. I'm unwilling to say for certain one way or the other. Memory is a tricky thing, you know. Well, I'll be. We made it in one piece after all. The sun's still nowhere to be seen, but neither Emmy nor Rin seem to mind. Thank <laughs> you.